everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Review, where we are going to be talking about episode four and five of Loki. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. And let me tell you, I don't want to say it again. I cannot wait for Wednesdays, man. And it's a, it's a sad moment that we only have one more Wednesday because this is going to be huge. And huge in this respect. There have been rumors or theories that of who will be in this castle. Some say it'll be Kang. And some say it'll be Loki. I feel it'll be Kang because of the disappointment people, because of all the, the little things that led towards us believing that Mephisto was in the person involved in WandaVision and it wasn't the case, at least for not for that series. I think all signs lead to, to Kang for this series. It just makes sense. Yeah. Although it could, it, it, it might not be, but before we get into that, please hit that like and subscribe button, hit that notification bell, share with your friends. If you do enjoy what we are doing here at the Nerd Gen Report or Nerd Gen Review for this matter, um, let's talk about it. Loki episode four. And by the way, I just added a disclaimer. Uh -huh. Our primary objective in this show is to not anger Alligator Loki. Because <laughs> he will take your hand. He will take our arms <laughs> off. Um, episode four was a very interesting episode. It was a very good episode, uh, especially when you compare it to episode three. It was a little bit lackluster, a little bit slow. But episode four brought us back to the greatness that Lo the Loki series has um, accustomed us accustom us to be um, excited about every Wednesday. And uh, we was trying to figure out, I mean, we had our theories about how they were going to get off um, Lamentis. Um, and it was weird that it was, again, spoiler warnings, if you haven't seen the Loki, well, I'm pretty sure you have anyway, but just want to put that out there. Um, this show would be pretty boring if you haven't seen it. No, I don't know. Exactly. You have no idea what we're talking about. But. Exactly. <laughs> um, so it was weird that it was that um, because I had this theory, I, I was thinking out, you know, I was, I was watching like the feeling they were able to pinpoint who where they were because of what Loki and Sylvie were feeling for each right. other. Right. Had they not, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, and tell me what you think, if had they not gone to get them, that Nexus event would have been erased, correct? At that point. Uh, you, you, that's a good question. Well, the Nexus event still happened, right? The planet still collided with the moon. Well, the Nexus event is them liking each other, but it would have been reset because of the apocalypse that was about For, to. The, exactly, exactly. Okay. So they were able to pinpoint where they were because of that event, that, 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 that mutual feeling that they had towards each other that they were developing caused that um i, I well, guess you, you're kind of getting into the time travel circular logic here because uh -huh. what you're talking about is the planet would have hit the moon that's the sacred timeline uh -huh. in theory uh -huh. their their chemistry caused is so strong and unpredictable that it I causes see. a branch that wasn't supposed to be there but part of why the branch persists is because what's then supposed to happen is that that gets the attention of Mobius, who then goes in, brings them out, and now we're on the story. That's kind of how I interpret it. Is that like it's it? It wasn't just it was the Nexus events that it was like a chain reaction 
as opposed to what Loki was doing at Pompeii, where he was, you know, doing all this grandstanding, but it was to no effect. The volcanic eruption was going to destroy er all evidence of that. So it was like a Nexus event within a Nexus event. And then this new Nexus event created a new timeline, which was not going to be concealed or covered up by the lamentous planetary but it, it Had they not gone to get them, it would have been reset, correct? Right, but I'm saying that's the circular logic. The circular mm -hmm. logic is the minute they had that chemistry, the it timeline is branched way. because then Mobius saw them, he took them out of there and now yeah. we're off and running. There okay. is no parallel got it yes it yes. yes yes yeah so they get them out of that situation i forget what happens next after that uh because I, I i i'm i'm so you know what i'm what's in my mind was etched in my mind and and, and this this is in episode five with classic lord loki screaming glor glorious purpose and that music it was <laughs> that 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 is the highlight of that show right there so i think for episode so we kind of parse the way this show has broken down mm -hmm. first off i think we can safely say even before the finale again the writing and the craft in this show has been the strongest of the three mm -hmm. so we can we can identify these episodes right the setup Kind of the, the the man out of time, the fish out of water in the opening, the exposition with Miss Minutes teaching us about the multiverse rules. We jump into kind of the pursuit and then Lamentus becomes probably the low point of the series, but it's probably the most important one for setting up the Nexus event in four and five, setting up Hiddleston's Kind of redemption path setting up sylvie as a new character for us to care about or to me was sort of like the ravona tva episode they because they go back into the tva and now loki because of sylvie has all this intel that he's kind of just like spilling to mobius like you're a variant it's all fake like he's okay. trying to just like right he's trying to give him all that info and it's like overloading his brain but then at the same time mobius is kind of like you know, that kind of ticks something because of that whole jet ski thing. Like it yes, doesn't yes, quite yes, sit yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But Ravona is really sinister in this episode, right? Because yes. she kind of captures them. She separates them. She kind of kind of emotionally tortures Sylvie a bit when she, you know, when Sylvie's like, why, what was my Nexus event? You know, why did you take me off of Asgard? And she clearly knows the answer. Yeah, and then she says, like, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, she kind of, so she's really sinister in this. And then we get kind of this big reveal of the Wizard of Oz, kind of the man behind the curtain is not the man behind the curtain. And like, what does that really mean? Which we don't really know yet. But this, so that to me felt like the Ravona TVA episode, which then sprang us into episode five, which is the void episode and kind of sets up whatever finale we're, we're gonna get here. So that's kind of like how I've parsed it really simply. I watched. Well, let me just say this. And when we saw the, I liked how they had that all set up with the time. Uh, what's, what are they called? The timekeepers. They look pretty cool. Oh, the room is great. And oh. the, the, the figures look awesome. Like if yes. Kang looks anything like those were that <laughs> we're in good shape. I, I definitely thought that was pretty dope and how we were able to see these entities that we thought really didn't exist. And we almost thought they did until uh, Sylvie threw that um, um, uh, weapon and severed the head of the main one. And it's kind of weird when, when she did, the other two started laughing. Right, yeah. Which was like, this is weird. <laughs> um, but it was, it was cool though. Um. Yeah, episode four. Well, well, episode four was definitely re more revealing, and and it sort of confirmed a lot of the speculation that people had, 
even from the first episode of who the TVA was and what was um, um, who was behind this sort of thing. It, this whole series always had that feeling of, especially with Loki always probing and asking questions, it always gave us that Wizard of Oz storyline sort of feel to it. Um, yeah, I think it also underscores like Loki's being used properly in this whole storyline, which is this agent of chaos, this unpredictable, like he is kind of like the Joker without the without the the purely evil streak in the sense yeah. of you can see why the TVA construct finds him so dangerous because we're now it's like you know it's like an onion right like we peel back one layer of the onion there's another layer there's another hidden layer like you know and even ravona it's not clear like is she kang in disguise is she a puppet herself of those three fake timekeepers like we don't know the layers there yet either i think ravona is just scared that they're on the right I don't think she's stupid. I think she knows what's going on. She just doesn't want anybody to find out. And I think whenever somebody speaks, I guess, truth, or they're on the right path, you see that look on her face like, oh, snap. And it's, I, don't, I don't think she she's, uh, uh, wants to find out who really is behind. I think she knows. I That's think the, she, yes. Yeah. But that's the beautiful, beautiful irony of this show is that you have Loki who lies for a living, <laughs> literally. But he is the agent of truth in this, this wow construct. Yes. Wow. That's a, that's a good that's a good that's a good uh, 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 catch right there. And we don't totally know what's beautiful about these characters. We don't totally know who really knows what. That's the thing, right? Mobi, even Mobius, you're like, we know he doesn't know everything, but there's been these hints of other Mobiuses. So we're like, what does he actually know? Is he in on this? Is he in on the caper? Is he truly on Loki's side? And then like Ravona, who in the comics, Ravona has so many connections to Kang, right? It's not an accident that the characters named that. So that's why you're kind of asking like, how close is she to Kang? Wait, but she was one of the, she was one of the, minute people yeah, minute, minute, when she yeah. captured sylvie but we were just told all the minute people were variants yes, so is yeah. she a variant or is she you know there's all these questions that are out there um that where they can kind of weave and choose how they want to wrap this up and mm -hmm. you know as always it'll be a challenge because the finales have been the hardest thing for these shows mm -hmm. but this one has more options it feels like there's more ways for this show to win than maybe the other two shows had going into their last episode. I wanted to ask you, how does this show win without it being this? What, would you, what, what is it that you would want to see so that it doesn't become a disappointment? I mean, for me, if it isn't Kang, I'm gonna be like, then what the hell, yo? It's like everything points to this dude. There's a possibility it may be Loki because there have been trailers and things, you know, they 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 go by quickly where that it's Loki, another variant of Loki who's running all of this, right? Um, and that's a huge possibility because of what we've already seen in trailers that we haven't seen in the series already. That would be very disappointing for me if it's just Loki and not Kang having all things point to this character with Ravona, with Kang, the building, it's Q-E-N-G, that has a direct connection to Kang the Conqueror. All this time travel stuff and, and this timeline. Anyway. Well, no, let's let's talk let's talk about this before we go. We can go back to episode five because episode five has so many angles and elements to my point about open endedness that let mm -hmm. let's go to the end and then we'll come back because I think you're okay. asking the right question. I actually happen to think it's going to be Loki inside the castle, another Loki, and I'll tell you why I think that mm -hmm. and why I think it's okay. 
at the end of the day, if you go back to the very beginning of this show and what this show is at its core, it's what makes a Loki a Loki? That's the central question of this show. It is ultimately Loki's pursuit of himself. Through time, through meeting these other Lokis, it's our Loki learning, what am I in the end? Like mm -hmm. I started out as a frost giant and now I'm what? And now I find out I've actually been all these different things through different pieces of the multiverse. So I think the completion of that journey, it makes the most sense to me that there's another version of himself, maybe the worst possible version of himself waiting in that castle. Maybe it's the version of himself that actually got to rule, that got to do the things that he's aspired to all along. And he gets to see what that looks like. I think it would actually make the most sense also because Hiddleston is the star of the show yeah. that his final kind of challenge would be him, him against him yeah. in a way. But <laughs> this show, as I just said, is all about layers. And so to me, Kang still belongs in the cut scene. He belongs in the stinger and you can make it such that the Loki that's in the castle is ultimately still the puppet uh, the layer of Kang. And the one thing this show has that the other shows didn't is it's already been promised a second season. And I think that will matter to the construction of how this is written. It is written as a season finale, not a series finale. Yeah, And that's why I think it's going to be a Loki in the castle. And if Kang shows up, and I think he might, it'll be in the post credit scene, kind of like Thanos did in Avengers 1. And I think and if that's okay because we know there's a future both in the movies and for this show. And if he doesn't show up, are you, you still be fine with it? I think I'll be all right with it only because I feel like, I feel like I've been a little more conditioned after we didn't get some of the reveals in WandaVision and Falcon and Winter Soldier. And I also feel like in this show, because they've taken, look, there's so many Kang Easter eggs that I feel like if he doesn't show up, he will not show up in a way that he kind of did show up. Like there'll be something that points so like it gets you closer and closer to him mm -hmm. to where you're kind of just be like, all right, I'm okay with this cliffhanger and waiting for quantum mania um, to kind of give me the, the actual reveal. But that's why I said, I think this show has more ways to win because of that. I, I think I can live with different endings to this. Um, and, and all of that, ignores like what is Mobius going to be doing with Ravona at the TVA in the last episode. There's clearly going to be two major steps yeah. in this episode. Yeah. And I have no idea what, I mean, he says he's going to burn it to the ground. Is he? I have no idea what yeah. that's going to look like. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be very interesting to see what that means. This episode would is going you, to be would you be, hour, Would you, would this under, would it undercut or ruin the show for you? If, if Jonathan Majors makes no appearance in this, I don't know about Ruin because, listen, if you've watched our show and, and, and seen where Loki stands in our uh, ranking in terms of excitement, in terms of what we're looking forward to, this has already, so far as our number one, my number one. Oh, I right. think... Yeah, I, I don't. I think even with well, the other shows had weaker finales. So I think even with a weaker finale, this is definitely the best show Marvel yeah. has produced. I just, for me, I just feel like because everybody was talking about Fisto and WandaVision, right? I think Marvel, being how Marvel is, is going to do the opposite of what they did with that show. In that. All the stuff that's pointing towards this character pairing, we didn't get it in WandaVision, although we still think it'll probably pop up later on. And this one is just like, it's just so blatant to me, right? And perhaps that's the, that's the whole point of it all, is to make us think this, this, but it actually isn't. But later on, it'll actually be this, I don't know. But will I be disappointed if it isn't Kang? Probably a little bit, because I'd like to see what that character looks like 
I like, listen, when I saw Thanos show up in a, after Avengers, I went crazy because I was like, I was like, I can't believe they're doing this. Exactly. I can't believe that they're doing it. They're going, yes, they're, they are going there. And I'd like to see that again. I'd like to feel that again. Like, oh, you know, I, I, I just, I just feel like it's time. We've gotten our, um, um, our, I guess, um, our, 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 I guess, how would I say it? We've gotten something that was very unexpected. If we were to get Kang, it would be, although it's not unexpected because we feel like it's him. I just want that confirmation. But can you, could, my issue with it being Kang is we know he can't be beaten in this show. We already know that. And in fact, it looks like he's probably going to be the closest thing to a Thanos we get in phase four. My guess is because he's a mul he's signed for multiple appearances. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the Doc Strange issue in the season finale of WandaVision. It's how much Kang can you put in this episode before it starts to overpower the main thrust of sort of Loki and Sylvie and this discovery journey of Loki. Whereas if you put him in the cutscene like Thanos was in Avengers... He's not competing. That's what I'm talking about. If I get that, I'm happy. If I don't get that, I'm a little bit disappointed. If I don't see that cutscene of, uh, of Kang, I want to see the beginning of that progression until we get to the ultimate storyline with him in it. Because again, I mean, I, yeah, let's not get it twisted. Infinity War was Thanos' movie. No question. It's part of what makes it great. I just want to see the beginning of Kang. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't necessarily, what, it doesn't have, it doesn't have to be Kang in that, that castle. But if we get a cutscene of Kang, I want to see that beginning. So let me let me so this is let me throw you a compromise to that, which is there's such a matrix feel to this whole show, right? This like world within a world within the TVA. And then like what's beyond the TVA, which is this castle maybe. But like, you know, if the cutscene basically was like another layer that basically shows you the entire TVA world that we've lived in, in this show is basically its own construct within another world and there's kind of like, you know, in the way that in Avengers, Thanos turned around so you could see his face. But even if they didn't turn around, even if you just saw the figure, like the profile, the back of Kang staring out at it, or you heard the voice, I, I think there's ways to do this without, even without like Jonathan Majors physically like being in front of you. In fact, Thanos in Avengers was not Josh Brolin. Exactly. That was, it, so that would be a way to kind of bridge the gap here and keep us super duper excited without it even really being Kang, like the Kang we're going to get in the future shows. So I, that's kind of what I'm looking for, something that makes us feel like this whole show has been monitored by the actual timekeeper. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of the, the send off. So I don't know. That's kind of how I think about it. But um, so, so you're going... It's Kang in the castle. That's your official prediction. I'm going Loki. That's in the no, castle. no. I, a Loki. That's in I the think castle. it's gonna. I because of what I've seen and the cases other people have made for this to be Loki. I think it'll be Loki. Um, and the hope is at the end of it, if there's a cutscene that we get that Thanos type introduction. That's the hope that I have. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, I, yo, to me, yo, that when, but let's talk about episode five. Yeah, great episode. <laughs> Listen, one of the most enjoyable hours I've had for quite some time was watching episode five 
seeing that Thanos copter was everything. Was everything, yo. Well, this was the greatest pound for pound Easter egg display oh, yeah. that Marvel's oh, ever yeah. put on screen. There was Easter eggs everywhere. And this is one of the shows you can do that with, right? Yes, exactly. Which is one of my questions for you, which is how much of what we saw is was total real. fan service fun versus an actual thing that will get carried forward into another show, movie, story somewhere else. I can give you that. Well, so you, Thanos Copter, I think we'd agree, fan it's, service, right? There's no, nothing happening with that. Throg? Try, oh, th oh, you want to do Throg first? Yeah, yeah, do Throg. throg. Okay. Pet Avengers? We're already getting super pets. Pet Avengers, any chance that that's in play? Alligator, Loki, Throg, Pet Avengers? No. Maybe? No, no, nothing. Wasn't there something that they said that they actually wrote something for that? Yeah, they apparently filmed a fuller scene involving Throg. That's what the sh that's what Waldron said, uh, or Kate Heron maybe said, mm -hmm. uh, who's the director. There apparently is a Throg cut scene that probably will make its way onto Disney Plus at some point, yeah. um, floating around somewhere, which I, I would love love to see. But it looked hilarious in the <laughs> in the jar. He's so close to the hammer. But... Yeah. So that that was that was cool to see. I, I think that they'll probably use that because it's just fun, something fun to do. Um, Living tribunal head. Do you think? Where do you think that goes? Real. I don't know, but because remember this, there was supposedly a scene that was written in with Doctor Strange having a conversation with the Living Tribunal, and I believe it was Endgame that never made it. Well, the, the weapon that Mordo uses in Doctor Strange the staff is of the, the Living Tribunal, is, yes. Yep. So they, they exist. They exist. Whether we'll see them anytime soon, I don't know. I think it's just too big of a character to really, really show off right now. And anytime in the near future, unless they're doing something cosmic. Uh, I don't, perhaps with the Eternals, who knows? I, I doubt it. Um, but something further off the line. I, I don't think that's something that we'll see anytime soon. Now, the Yellow Jacket head is something definitely that we're going to be seeing in um, Ant-Man Quantumania. Because uh, if you saw that, you saw the big uh, helmet. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see how he's involved in Quantumania. Because uh, I don't think anybody believed that he was actually dead because of wh how it had happened. You, I'm pretty sure most people thought that he was just, he just went super subatomic and you can't find him, whatever the case may be. So there's still story to tell with that character. What were your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I mean, I think the fact that afterwards um, it came out that Corey Stoll, in fact, is signed to be in Ant-Man 3. I think really is too much of a coincidence to ignore. I think the only fun question to ponder is whose helmet is that? Is that the yellow jacket from Ant-Man? Is that a variant yellow jacket that happened to find its way into the void, right? Like, but yeah. I think there's ye the yellow jacket crumbs are strong here. We know we're getting Jonathan Majors and Corey Stoll in Ant-Man 3. So, and with the amount of Kang hints in this show, I think the odds are that probably is Yellow Jacket, like the Yellow Jacket's helmet. Yeah. Um, and we'll, we might get a little connectivity between this show and that movie as to how he gets from, you know, where we saw him disintegrated or shrunk in, in Ant-Man to, to here. So that was, that, was, that was pretty cool. Now, you referenced Kang Corporation, Q-E-N-G. The only question I have for you there was, the reason why that kind of came up, part of the reason that came up is we also see like what you look to be like the Avengers Tower, but it actually turns out to be Kang's Tower. Now in the comics, Tony Stark sells that to, a to the Kang Griffin. Corporation, not knowing that Kang the Conqueror, Tony Stark, man, smart guy, but Kang, <laughs> Kang, come on, man, it's just, <laughs> just spelling, but um, sells the court. I don't know, like... I was curious to know if you thought like that storyline might get revealed or played out in some other way in the future where we see that as part of the the, the history or part yeah. of Kang's journey here. Was it ever revealed? And I'm sure you, you do you remember Homecoming? 
Yep. Remember when um, Happy was moving out? They were moving out all of Tony Stark stuff. Mm -hmm. Who did they sell sell the building to? Oh, they didn't. They never mentioned that. But I don't think they did. They never mentioned that. So that could be it right there. Good, good catch. That could be because I was watching. I was watching it the other day. I was like, "Hey, they're leaving," but they never mentioned who they sold it to. So that could be a tie-in right there. There you go. That's a good call. I bet you're so, onto something there. Yeah, it has. It has to be. I mean, that's the perfect moment to really actually input that if they wanted to do that right there. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, so we got the living tribunal. We got the 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 Kang building. Um. Well, let me let me put Elias in here because okay. Elias is is a is a major character from the comics, right? It's a, it's the first entity to escape time, is effectively what what it is. Do you think Elias has a role beyond this show, or was that just they needed like a guardian creature for the void, so they pulled something and name like with a name that we would know? Listen. After what we've seen with the Taskmaster, I don't think a lot go gets past this show. Okay, I tend to agree with you, but yeah, I, I don't think it gets past this show. I think this was something a good spot to put a life in, and I don't think we'll probably get any more development on that character. Do you think Kid Loki in the Void is Kid Loki in Young Avengers? Hmm. Most probable. Okay. Because we've had a Young Avengers in every one of the shows. Oh, right? yeah. Like, so it would make sense. The actor is a somebody. He's not like uber famous, but it's not a no name. Um, mm-hmm. So it's conspicuous. But... Yeah, he's that. De- I think he's definitely going to be involved. Um, what else? About classic Loki? <laughs> that was, I mean, that was like, here, wait. I'm just gonna walk onto the stage. I'm going to crush everyone in my path for one episode, and then I'm gonna go out like a boss. Listen, that Richard E. Grant, that scene, and that music, and him doing what he's doing, and then saying glorious. Po- oh my God, that was. I thought the scale and the effects. And the drama of the fin- of the end of episode five was was at movie level. Oh yeah, oh hell. And yeah. actually, I thought it was I thought it was funny because I actually thought Richard E. Grant in that moment, he actually probably got the single coolest Loki moment we've had. Oh yes. Like I think that's better than any single yes. Tom Hiddleston sequence that he he Most got certainly. in any of the movies. Most it certainly. was really cool. Oh, and he was. He was just like the whole episode, like he was given the exposition. He was telling you like, well, oh, alligator Loki is insensitive. <laughs> don't infect. It was everything was so perfect. I was like, I had said you know, earlier in the show, like Hiddleston is so powerful on screen. It's really hard to go toe to toe with him. Mm-hmm. This guy did it. Yes. Like, this guy basically walked in and said, here, stand off to the <laughs> side. The spotlight is mine. Oh, <laughs> and he took it. He took it. <laughs> That scene is so memorable, man. That scene is so oh, memorable. Man. And one of the things that w- I found so interesting is that um, when he talked about that he cast uh, a duplicate of himself that even Thanos was tricked into believing that he actually killed them. Mm-hmm. That theory, and who knows if Marvel... See, this is a thing. This is possible that Marvel took it from this uh guy um new rock stars i don't know if you heard of them new rock stars on youtube have you heard of them no i'm not i'll send you a link they did this a long time ago after infinity uh after yeah after infinity war they mentioned that that and i thought it was this is whatever right they sort of had a, a theory that folk that, that loki was still alive and that he probably cast a, a duplicate of himself and that he was back in the, the debris. And he quoted that same theory verbatim in this show. 
So I was just curious to to mm. to to believe that it is possible that the, that and Marvel watches this stuff and sort of gets a lot of their ideas from this. It's, it's, it was crazy to, to hear that. I was like, oh snap, they they did that a long time ago when he was talking about it. I was like, yo, they 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 talked about this. So that was interesting. Um, but yeah, Richard, he, I mean, everybody was talking about his um, um, uh, appearance in this yeah, show. What was he going to do? Yeah. Yeah. And man, I think the, the without the music is probably not as powerful, but that music, man. That music, music in the show has been very it's not the very, kind of music you'd listen to on your spotify but for the show it's been oh, actually yeah. a very good fit I, but like i said the, the the end of the episode was exactly what i want from this show in a way that episode four actually made me a little bit nervous because episode four they're in the room with the timekeepers and it kind of winds up being like a knife fight you know and i'm yeah, like that's yeah. not the strength of the show but episode five was like we're using our minds to trick a right we're creating these illusions and like I'm like, that's the element of Loki. Yeah. And it was great to kind of kind of see that. The other thing I loved, I have to, this is where I, I the writing shows they understand the essence of the character is when that mayor Loki comes down and they all double cross each other at the <laughs> same time. And you're like, that is the <laughs> essence of what Loki is. Yeah, Everyone exactly. is looking to one up the other. <laughs> exactly, oh. exactly. And this is something I had mentioned before, especially... I think after episode two, where I mentioned that trust was a big theme of that episode. Mm -hmm. If you you watch that episode two, they mentioned the word trust. Do you trust me? All this stuff. So with Loki is like, (sighs) you find yourself giving him a second chance because of the things that he does. But again, I'll reiterate that Loki does whatever he needs to do, whether good or bad, to get to the ultimate goal, whatever that goal may be. And this episode five really displayed a lot of that in a, in a funny manner, but in essence, it is who Loki is, right? So, uh, yeah, it is. I, I did have a question for you on this line, though, which is, do you think our Loki, that's what I'll call him, the, the Hiddleston mm-hmm. character in this, do you think he's been redeemed and turned into a hero full force by the end of this episode? Because he no. remember, he taps Sylvia on the shoulder and he basically is like, I'm going to sacrifice myself to get Elias' attention so you can... Ench-. The Loki we know in from the movies wouldn't have done that at this stage of his development, right? In 2012, that Loki would never have done that. Maybe the Loki in Infinity War would have because he kind of did yeah. at the very end. But not this Loki. So I was trying to, like, do you, A, do you think he's, kind of, like, that Loki has, and then he gives Mobius that meaningful hug where he's like, my friend. He has that kind of connection with Sylvie, which is, you know, it's some sexual tension with yourself, which is a little bit <laughs> weird. But, but I guess that's my question. Do you think this, this version of the 2012 Loki in this show is now full on hero. And if so, do you think he makes it out of this show? So we know the show's coming back. Do you think he makes it out of the finale? I think he makes it out of the finale. Okay. But he certainly may, has made himself out to be the hero. But I think at the end of it, there's still a double cross somewhere. And there's always, okay. there's, there, 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 it just always is. And I think she sets those things up when they're sitting, when he has the blanket over her, she, she was uh, talking about, um, she said, I, I'm still having a tough time believing whether or not you're gonna uh, um, double cross me or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and he was like, I would, I'm, I, I'm not that guy anymore. And again, Loki's going to say and do whatever he needs to do in order to keep on going, you know, and until the opportunity arrives where he can be in control, he's going to ride it on. He's, he's, he's almost, he's like Palpatine. 
you know, riding out. Like, although Palpatine is is on a is on a on a next level in terms of well, he's pure evil, yeah. <laughs> so he's tricky, but he's pure evil, yeah. Yeah, tricky yeah. but pure evil. But his plans are like, come on, he had Order sixty six and, and ready. Um, but Loki, uh, at the end of this, he's there's gonna be some double cross at the end of this, and um, I don't know what it will be. It will be painful though, because this yes. this this Loki's journey has set him up as a character that's easy to root for, which has been interesting. And if he wow. double crosses Sylvie, or he does something that basically is a path for him to consolidate power, it's gonna be a dramatic moment. Yeah. Wow, man. Wow. I think at the end of this. The emotions I think that people are going to feel are going to be, are going to, I think is what people are meant to feel with this character. And that is betrayal. For rooting for somebody um, that you probably wouldn't have rooted for, but he baited you in with his actions. And the things that he said, and then he turns around and does this, and you're going to feel betrayed. And you're going to watch another season of this, right? Because it's the ability to have that hope that he is doing the right thing and, he, that, and that he's a good guy. I think yeah, that's, 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 the, that's the trick of this show. The, now, the fun thing with this show is that Hiddleston can continue to be in the show, but he could always just be a different Loki, right? He doesn't always have to be the same Loki. So that's why I asked, like, the heroic path for this particular Loki would probably be for it for him to die in in the in the cause, right, of overthrowing the TVA, exposing the truth. But I don't know. Like, it's it, I mean, to the credit of this show, I don't honestly know what to expect. He's clearly been set up as a sympathetic you know, turned righteous figure. But if he if he pulled the rug in a major way in the last episode, it wouldn't it wouldn't be a shock. As we've been told in the show, expect the expected, right? When it comes yeah. to Loki. And what we expect is is a con yeah. um, at the end of the day. So uh la- other one just for me is like, what do you think is going to happen at the TVA? So so Mobius going back in, do you think he is being on the level when he says I am going to try to burn it to the ground? Because clearly he has to, his showdown is with Ravona. We know that. That's what the show is pointed toward. So what is that going to look like in your mind? I think if he goes out to set and, and, and destroy the TVA, I think it allows for these Nexus events to cause the next events for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I think this is this whole show was to set up that movie. Because I still don't know where we stand, what Sylvie did in did they rectify that plan of hers sending those resets to those different timelines did those reset right true i don't know where we stand with that um and if the tva doesn't exist and he burns it down then we're gonna have these nexus events happening a lot and what will be the cause of that my guess is we'll see what happens in doctor strange 2. i think this series is going to set uh, this phase four or five of, of marvel and uh, um it's going to be very interesting to see man because the possibilities <laughs> are endless with this i think whatever he so if we assume he's going to burn it to the ground i think whatever he burns to the ground will not be the actual mechanism of the timeline and the timekeepers. I think it's safe to say those will not be destroyed in this show. And that's where it goes to, it could feed into Kang's cameo at the end of like, 
some of his illusion gets messed up yeah. basically by what they're about to do and that gets his attention or he's been watching it the whole time and now realizes i have to intervene yeah. in a way that i didn't expect but i find it hard to believe that mobius will be successful that comment struck me as the kind of thing of he's probably not making it out of this show and Interesting. I, just a question. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I have a tough time seeing Owen Wilson signed up for two, three seasons of this. I, I actually kind of feels like his character might be better served, kind of resolving, yeah, and then opening the door to something else for season two. Before we wrap up, I wanted to ask you your um, visual, your your thoughts on visually what this uh, this show has presented so far in terms of. Um, the visual effects, and because I, because in my opinion, what uh, when they enchant Eliath and what it reveals, that looks amazing. Because that you see that white streak, yep. people are comparing that to that being the timeline, right? That or, or the sacred timeline, and it just looks, it just looks. These are the things that makes your imagination go crazy. And, and it just looks, it looks spot on. It looks great. I think the, yeah, I think the, the so this show managed to convert me on one of my drumbeat concerns early on, which was that like when we were traveling through time, we were kind of not really getting these truly distinctive sets and, mm -hmm. you know, milieus or whatever. And I kind of was like, what's the point i think now that they've taken us kind of into the cosmic into the void i kind of am okay that they didn't do that because i realized that's not what this show was ultimately about this show is not about retracing the past of the mcu it was much more about charting you know charting courses into new territories right and so I think the other the, the look of this show has been superior in the sense that this show had the challenge the other two didn't. The other two were grounded in the real world. Mm -hmm. So they could kind of lean on. I, mean, I know Wanda had created this illusion, but her illusion was like a real world town that she had enchanted. Yeah. And Falcon and the Winter Soldier was very much in a world we had already been in. Mm -hmm. So this show had the challenge of creating something new. Mm -hmm. And I think the imagination really from the, from the start has paid off. I mean, the look of the TVA is a strong look, right? Right from its analog old tools to like the look of the timekeeper statues and stuff mm -hmm. like this. You know, Lamentus was a little bit of a lull, I would say, but I think that was deliberate because they didn't want anything to distract from the two characters. And then I think the void was sort of at the level of any Avengers movie. I mean, just the, yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah, visual yeah. of it, the wasteland, the construction of the set, and then the battle at the end with Elias leading to the reveal of the castle. I mean, you couldn't, like you think about like what TV was 20 or 30 years ago, there's no way there would have ever been a show that looked like that yeah, yeah. on your television. So yeah, it, yeah. it was, it was top, it's been top notch visually. Yeah, man, this show is exceeded my expectations um still a lot more shows that they that that's going to be coming our way especially august uh 11th i think is it is well um, that was my preseason pick for number yeah, one so we'll see that's that's definitely a show that's looking very very interesting uh to me and to us um and i'm looking forward to that uh, there was one comment I had made previously regarding what if series in terms of the way it looks in, in the, the animation. And I don't know if you agree with me. And I don't know if you've heard me say this before, but the, the, the classic Superman cartoon animation that they did mm -hmm. back in the sixties and stuff, like that, it definitely looks like that. Uh, obviously a little bit more modernized a little bit, but it certainly gives me that feel. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I would. It's definitely a different vibe than like Invincible or, you know, the Batman, the animated series. Like it's definitely its own distinct look. Although I will say like it was really neat to hear some of the familiar voices 
just in the trailer, like hear the actual, you know, hear Chadwick Boseman's voice come back to life and hear Jeffrey Wright. And I think that's one of the strengths of that show is that you're, you're not just, we'll see how the writing is, but to kind of have the, the vocal talent of the actual Avengers doing different things and playing different roles. I mm. it got, it, I'm still super excited. I don't know how you were, but like just watching oh, no, no, I was, some I of was, the, the shot, I was like, this looks really cool. So I, I, I love the look. I, I, I like the fact that some of the actors, some of the actors, not all actors are coming back. Not all. Uh, especially like Tony Stark, uh, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, is certainly not uh, coming back. He, he, he probably asked for quite a bit of money uh, to do that. And it was like, forget this. We, we're getting somebody. And this is, again, this leads to the fact that, you know, Kevin Feige has said, we're not doing these long contractual things anymore. Because then you get Robert Downey Jr. and, and Scarlett Johansson's, right? Um, and, hey, you don't want to be put in that position anymore. Because, it, you know... Again, Robert Downey Jr. and Scarlett Johansson, these are exceptional actors and, 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 and talents, and they deserve what they've gotten. And, and that's great. But at the end of the day, you want to keep things tight with regards to money and um, what your production is. And at the end of the day, these guys are employees, right? And and so you sort of want to try to keep it that way unless you come across exceptional individuals that you want to continue working with even more and, and do things a, a little bit different. Who knows? But I guess that's just business, right? Um, and, and having that employee-employer sort of relationship. But um, yeah, what if... Edgar Wright, uh, is it Edgar Wright? Jeffrey Wright, sorry, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Wright. Wright. Jeffrey Wright. Yeah. That dude sounds amazing. Man. That dude sounds amazing. I can't wait to hear his opening. I hope we get an opening monologue for each show uh, um, of the What If series, because he's he's fantastic. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if he is the watcher for whenever we get uh, Galactus coming to earth and he has to talk to the fantastic four that's going to be a very interesting situation right there i hope they make that happen but anyway that's our show for you today we, we're talking about loki episode four and five and what this ending may be um so far loki has been amazing and only a few more days left until we get the season finale of the loki series brian any last words no, it just, you know, I think th this show raised the bar through episodes one through five. I think, as we've said, Marvel's had the finale challenge so far. Let's yeah. see what a sh what this show can, can accomplish in its last episode. But, you know, my expectations are higher based upon what I've seen and the consistency, you know, for the first, for the first five episodes. So yeah, they've, they've got, they've hooked me in all the way and I'm, a, I'm super duper excited to see how it, how it not resolves, but just kind of where they leave it. Yeah. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for joining us on the Nerd Gen Review. Uh, this has been a very, very great, uh, exciting discussion, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please leave a like and uh, subscribe, and, and please comment in the comment section below. Tell me what are your favorite um, Easter eggs of the Loki series. Uh, do you have this series as the number one uh, show for you thus far? Obviously, we've gotten WandaVision and 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 how can I know Winter Soldier? We've got much more, but so far, this for us is our number one. And I just want to hear what you guys have to say. Um, thank you for joining us once again on the Nerd Gen Review. We'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,